Fires have always been part of the life cycle of America's forests. And letting some fires burn or even intentionally setting them has often been considered good forest management. But that policy has become problematic as more and more people build homes in forested areas. Now some innovators have come up with a new way to clear and renew our woodlands, and it's a plan that pays for itself. Barry Peterson has the story. This massive tree-eating machine has a funny name, the Feller Buncher, but a serious job. Doing what nature once did, thinning out trees on the Trinchera Blanca Ranch. The goal is creating a sustainable forest. So we moved here in 1969. When you have a sustainable forest, what does that mean in terms of fires? So it means we're more fire resilient. Forest fires are nature's game plan for managing a forest. A forest fire isn't always bad as long as it's a cool burning fire. You know, we do some prescribed burning and we'll do more prescribed burning in the future as understory uh, That's the small fires, stuff small, underneath. Yes. Mm -hmm. But when we get these big devastating crown fires that we've seen from California all the way through the west into, into Colorado, those are extremely devastating and, and we're trying to prevent from those big catastrophic fires. The fires are bigger for several reasons. There are heroic efforts to put them out before they destroy the growing number of houses built in forested areas. But that undercuts nature's way of burning off undergrowth, and that is making forest dangerously dense. Jonas Feinstein is Colorado's state conservation forester. He, along with biologist Ty Woodward, brought us to Colorado's Kiowa Creek Ranch, owned by the Audubon Society. This area has been cleared to look like it was for centuries. Trees widely spaced, where the worst threat is a grass fire. And for that, the ponderosa pines have a nature-made defense. What's great about these trees in particular, ponderosa pine, is they're fire adapted. They develop a thick bark mm -hmm. at their base that is fire resistant. So the little fires, the grass fires, they've got a bark that is insulated to that. Absolutely. But Woodward sees danger in the dense forest nearby. When you see that, do you say to yourself, I gotta get rid of that stuff or it's gonna come and get me one day? Oh yeah, absolutely. And then you have no forest left and you just have a dead zone of black trees. At Trinchera Blanca Ranch, thinning creates its own problem. What to do with all the excess trees, including thousands of acres killed by mountain pine beetles? The infrastructure isn't there and to um, invest in the infrastructure and put the infrastructure in to do it is quite expensive. By infrastructure, you really mean the lumber mill. The sawmill, yes, sir. Absorb all the stuff that you're cutting. Yes, the sawmill. So Blanca Forestry Products was born. A sprawling lumber mill that produces about 20 million board feet of lumber a year sold across two dozen states. And what helps manage the forest comes with about 70 jobs and that helps people up and down this rural valley. John Medina is a night watchman. It's a great boost for the economy. Helps everybody, helps the people working here, helps the small businesses. You know, there's a lot of uh, money that's staying here and people staying here. Jose Ontiveros stacks wood for the kiln, a job that makes possible an enviable Colorado lifestyle. I love fishing, yeah. And why do you like to fish? Sometimes to eat and just to be out in nature and just enjoying the elements. I'll even go fishing when it's raining and it's just, just great. And it's a family affair. The mill also employs his sister, stepdaughter, and wife Antoinette, who works in the front office. So the logical question, if it works here, why not everywhere? The answer, money. It's not so much a money-making enterprise. We're trying to break even. Uh, like I said, the ownership is dedicated to make this happen. So, you know, it is an investment. So this is really an emotional investment. It's not really a capitalist investment. Absolutely, it's an emotional investment. The investor is billionaire financier and environmental philanthropist Louis Bacon. Trinchera is one of several areas he is working to preserve. Preserve things like this, a once overgrown aspen grove that was cut down and is now regrowing. It's going to be denser than what you see in the parts that we don't harvest, but that density will start to reduce. There'll be some that die out. The animals will have some effect on some of them, so it will, it will thin itself as we go on. A remarkably simple prescription for how humans can save a forest. Do it 
nature's way. For CBS This Morning Saturday, Barry Peterson at the Trinchera Blanca Ranch, Colorado. Truly is a public service what they're doing there. It's very complicated managing forests. If somebody can figure it out, I mean, there's a lot of different ideas, whether it's private industry or the federal government. If somebody can figure out some sort of sustainable yeah. plan long term for everyone, right. it would certainly be helpful. I love the learning from nature, though. Do yes. it nature's way. Listen yes. to nature. Absolutely. Yeah.